Hello. Hi, I'm Melissa. Today I'm going to share with you my journey to learning Go through a text analysis project which I'm really passionate about. This is my GitHub handle. Feel free to explore the code for this project. So a little background about myself. I graduated from NUS last July and I'm barely nine months into my first job at SP Digital. My background is in data analytics and when I joined the team, I have absolutely no knowledge on software development despite being, able, uh, being hired for a software engineer position. At the beginning, I'd often ask myself if this role is a right fit for me. After all, data analytics and software development are inherently different. However, after months into the job, I gathered a sense of familiarity and I realized that uh, yeah, the technical skills are similar, even though the, the implementation is quite different. So anyway, I hope that by the end of this talk, beginners like myself will be motivated and encouraged to explore Go, while experienced developers will be inspired to create interesting libraries around data science. So, why Go? For me, after a couple months into front-end development in Ruby on Rails, I was involved in a blockchain project and was ex expected to write some backend services in Go. Then I didn't know much about Go. My superficial understanding was that it is a programming language designed by Google, and since it's Google, Go should be good and <laughs> should, have, should have a strong community in terms of uh, help I can get on platforms like Stack Overflow. And it is true, it really is. So although now I'm learning, um, exploring Go, purely out of interest, I started off because of what I was expected to, to deliver at work. And I know that this is not the most compelling reason for learning Go, but I hope that through my text analysis project, which identifies keywords of what developers think and love about Go, you'll be better inspired by the beauty of the language. So here it is, the product of my first Go project, a word cloud of keywords developers talk and love about Go. So from this word cloud, we can see that the top few popular keywords are easy, good, time, and simple. So I believe everyone in this room can relate to these keywords one way or another, regardless of whether you have experienced it uh, first hand while coding in Go or are looking to learn a new language. So as a beginner, I find that Go is easy and simple to pick up. And even if I had troubles, answers were readily available online, which makes learning smooth and pleasant. So since I had prior knowledge on, uh, on text analysis and a clear goal in mind as to what I wanted to develop, which is the word cloud, the planning process was pretty straightforward and all I had to focus on was implementing it in Go. So I basically broke down the project into three smaller parts to work on text mining, text processing, and the word cloud, of course. So for text mining, it includes scraping individual online reviews about Go and combining them for text processing. And for text proce processing, it includes removing non-alpha numeric characters and applying lowercase. So these are done to normalize the text so that we can do further analysis. And for text, uh, for natural language processing, it, uh, it includes applying lemmatization and removing stop words. So for those who may not know, lemmatization basically refers to transforming words to its base or dictionary form with the use of dictionary and morphological analysis of words. And stop words refer to the most common words used, for example, words like the, a, uh, b, etc. And these words are basically um, so, so basically what I want to do with this stop words is to remove it from the, the text so that I can do a better analysis. And since there is no universal list of stop words used by all, um, some sort of tuning needs to be done to this list of stop words. And lastly, visualization, which includes the, the part where I have to create the word cloud. So for text mining, I've looked at various forums and I've identified Quora to extract reviews from as it was most plausible among the other forums that I, I was looking at. And I extracted about 50 answers from the following questions. 
uh, why should I uh, why should I use Go? What is Golang good for? Why do people use Golang? And what's the best thing about Golang? And here is a re uh, an example of how a review looks like. My favorite parts include good build time, etc. So in order to extract the correct information from this page, it's important to understand the HTML structure of the page. And I had to inspect the page and identify the element which is unique to the text component. Uh, so in this case, it is the class name UI QTEX Expanded. And after gathering the individual reviews, they are then combined into a document for text processing. So here's the code for um, the uh, mining web content. I used a library called Go Query, and it is based on Go's net HTML package and a CSS selector called Cascadia, which has similar syntax and features to jQuery. And what this does is simply load a specified document based on the URL, find, get, combine, and return all CSS class name UI QTEX expanded. So, next, for text processing, I replaced all non-alpha numeric characters using the regex package which, uh, with space so that what's meant to be two words separated by punctuation will not be combined into one. And after which, I applied lowercase to all characters using the strings package. So, for example, this sentence here, my favorite parts include good build time. This sentence will be processed to the following. And if you notice the changes uh, to the, the letters M, G, and punctuations, you realize that it has been processed. So for natural language processing, I applied lemmatization using a library called Golem. As mentioned earlier, lemmatization transforms words to its base form using a predefined dictionary. So here, in, a, in the for loop, if the word cannot be lemmatized, it will append the word the way it is into results. And if the word can be lemmatized, it will append the base word, which is the lemma, and finally return the lemmatized result. So for example, this sentence here, compared to other programming languages, Go is easier to understand. This sentence will be processed to the following. And we can notice that there has been changes made to words compared, programming, languages, ease, and easier. Indeed, they have been transformed to its base form. So I also remove stop words using my customized stop word list, which includes words like go, program, and language. So these words are specific to my project, which I want to ignore uh, during, the, during the text analysis process. So for example, this sentence here, compared to other programming languages, Go is easier to understand. This sentence will be processed to only have compare, easy, and understand with their respective word frequency. Because as mentioned earlier, I've included words like Go, program, and language, so therefore it's, it's, it's not in the output in this in this situation. So with all this being implemented, I didn't have the data ready to create the word cloud, which looks like this. So this word cloud may seem simple to create uh, or to build, but it wasn't. Much thought was put into creating it, really a lot of math in a way. Yeah, so um, I basically had to determine several things. I had to determine the image size, the number of words to draw, the order of words to draw, the font, the font size, and also where to draw each word. On top of this, I also have to ensure that the word should not lie outside of the image and should not be overlapping other drawn words because we are drawing it in a sequence. And this part was the trickiest, which I will cover in more detail. So to ensure that the word is within the image, I had to understand how coordinates of a word is, uh, are being calculated and drawn. So when calculating, uh, apparently, the 0, 0 coordinate is at the bottom left here as shown by the red arrow. And this point here 
It's the closest point to the, the origin uh, coordinate 00. zero. So, however, when drawing the image space, the 00, zero coordinate is actually at the top left. And if I do not transform the coordinates of the word, part of the word will lie outside of the image just like this. So as you can see that, um, you can see roughly about three-fifths of the word is lying outside of the image, and this is not desirable because you cannot see the entire, the, the entire word in the image. So ideally, what should happen is coordinates should be transformed to look like this. So in order to ensure that the word is completely in the image space, some calculation was done to determine the coordinate of new y. And when calculating the coordinates, this formula is being used. New y equals to 2 multiplied by mean y minus max y. So here's an example of drawing the word outside the image. And if the word uh, if the word is outside of the image, either of these conditions will be met. 2 multiplied by mean y less than equals to max y, or mean y is less than equals to 0. So here's the code to check if the word really lies outside of the image. Also, I had to ensure that the word should not overlap other drawn words since, uh, as mentioned earlier, it's drawing in sequence. So here's an, here's an example of colliding words. So if, if words are colliding, um, the following conditions will be met. So in this case, A min x will be less than or equal to B max x. A max x will be more than or equal to B min x. And A min y will be less than or equal to B max y. And finally, A max y will be more than or equal to B min y. So with all these conditions being met, it means that indeed two words are colliding and this is not what we want to, to see in the output in the word cloud. So the question is, how did I exactly draw the words on the image? So the approach is to start drawing from the center of the image and it spirals outwards using a function called pick a dot. And this function here, pick a dot, basically searches for the next potential spot on the image for the word to be drawn using the sine and cosine rule. I'm not sure if you actually remember the sine and cosine rule from middle school or high school. Uh, but yeah, so basically I use the, the idea of sine and cosine rule. So in the input here, I, it basically determines the hypotenuse and the theta, va theta value, which then affects the x and y coordinates of the word. So the x and y coordinates will then be validated if the word is in the image and is not overlapping other words as mentioned uh, earlier in the previous steps. So now with all this in place, um, it's time to go run main.go and output the word cloud. And I've created a GIF showing how each word is being drawn on the image using the pick a dot function. And in this case, we can see that it started drawing from the word Google in the center of the image, and then it spirals outwards until all words, all desired words are being um, printed or being drawn on the image. And there it is, the project is done. So after spending a couple of weeks learning Go and doing this text analysis project, I reflected on the entire hands-on experience. I remember when I started this journey, I struggled a lot to find what's the best way, or rather the most effective and efficient way to learn. After all, I still had work waiting for me and there wasn't the luxury of time. So what should I install? Which book should I read? Which online course should I, should I enroll in? I had many, many questions. And I basically didn't know where to start. And there are just many ways to learn and being able to identify which method of learning works best is very important to achieve the best outcome. So after trying various ways of uh, picking up goal like reading books, reading blogs, etc., I realized that hands-on learning, learning with an objective, is the best method which works for me. And being able to focus on things that I'm most interested in, one at a time, not only allows me to concentrate on learning, 
but also it motivates me to explore within the, the, the context of my interests, which really motivated me to push even further. So upon reflection, I've gathered some tips which I like to share with uh, those who are looking to pick up Go or those who are rather new to Go. And here are the tips. So firstly, I'd like to recommend um, to start, get started with a tour of Go. It's really a great starting ground. It simply is like, I, ca I cannot thank like, enough for the, the, cr the creator of a tour of Go. It's just amazing. <laughs> and um, there are just too many things to learn. Out, there are really too many things out there to learn. And it is, it is uh, as a beginner, it can be really overwhelming and intimidating. However, with a clear goal in mind as to what you want to learn and achieve, I feel that learning becomes very encouraging. So I like to also totally recommend to identify and work on interesting projects which will keep you going. And at least for me, I was able to focus on what I wanted to achieve or wanted to build within, uh, within a month. And yeah, it was, it was, it was really wow, amazing. So, um, and also, there will definitely be times when you will encounter obstacles, but don't be afraid to face them. So I uh, turned to Google and Stack Overflow. They are my best friends throughout the journey. And I cannot stress enough how much they have helped me in learning and making this journey an enjoyable one. So last but not least, um, don't hesitate to ask friends who are experiencing Go. And um, take this opportunity to befriend fellow Gophers in this room. And I'm sure that they are more than happy to guide you and share with you the, the other tips that they have for someone who, who's learning Go or who's, who's rather new to Go. And on this note, I'll end, this, um, end my talk with a quote by Mark Twain. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. So I wish you an exciting journey with Go. Thank you.